Last week I published a video on this guy right here. This is the Mossberg MC2C, and I really like this pistol. However, in my critiques of this pistol, I mentioned that there was really one thing that I kind of sort of had a problem with, and that was that it uses U-notch sights. And several of you asked, well, Kurt, what's the problem with U-notch sights? Well, it is a matter of personal preference, but besides the obligatory skepticism of anything that comes out of the competitive circuit, uh, I have a few issues with uh, U-notch sights, not nearly as bad on this set of sights as some of the other ones that I've seen, because there are some U-notch sights that are literally a ghost string that's been cut in half, and those have their own problems associated with them in that you end up with a much wider rear sight than the uh, front post. If we take the inside diameter of that rear sight, and I pre-measured this and locked it in so you guys could see this, we take that dimension and then map it onto the external dimension of that front sight, you can see that we basically get the same dimension. There's a little bit of play there, a couple thousands on either side, but that's how you can test to see whether your sights are a decent set of sights or not. The problem with the half ghost ring sight is that because it's a half ghost ring, you end up with a true semicircle, and that true semicircle ends up being wider at the apex of the wings than the front sight. So you end up with a whole bunch of extra air on either side of that front blade, and it can be more difficult to determine center the more air you have. So it's better to have a finer sight for accurate shooting. The value there, or excuse me, the purported value there is that because you have a wider rear sight, your target is less occluded and you can more quickly acquire the target, even though you're going to fish around more looking for those, that front sight to get it properly lined up. A U-notch sight that is a true U, as in shaped like this, high sidewalls, round bottom, is that it does more of the traditional sight than, say, a just a half ghost ring. There are really two shapes that draw the attention of the human eye. The first is any intersecting lines. So it doesn't really matter what the angle is. There are some angles that are more unnatural than others, like uh, the right angle, for instance. Uh, but generally speaking, if you take two lines and put them together, it draws people's attention to it. That's why uh, some sites have a projected triangle or a chevron. Uh, it draws your attention to the tip of it. The other one is the circle, the center of the circle. Humans are really good at finding the center of a circle. And this is where my main problem with the U-notch sights actually comes up. Assuming normal human sight without any major issues, and you can validate this for yourself, you can pick up your own pistol and tell me if I'm full of crap. When you throw up a set of sights, regardless of what kind of sights they are, doesn't matter, your eye, through millions of years of evolution, has been trained to focus on the most detailed image, which is going to be the thing that is closest to you. Trijicon came up with an entire line of sights based on this concept, it's called the bend and aiming concept. You're gonna find that sight, your eye is going to focus on it, and then you're going to actively force it to focus on either the front sight or the target, depending on if you're using something like a red dot sight or something like that. When you're using a U-notch sight, you have the added complication in that as a human, you are exceptional at finding the center of anything. So your eye is going to be drawn to the circle portion, the semicircular portion of this U-notch you are going to find the center of that, and you're going to tend to try to line up the circle in the front of that site that has the tritium bead in it and the photoluminescent paint around it. That is going to cause you to align that site low instead of the proper level. So instead of lining this plane with that plane, you end up mapping that circle into that half circle or that radius that represents, it would be technically a full circle if it wasn't extended up with the wings of the U, quote unquote. That's my problem with U-notch sights. So the sights that I tend to use are two different types of sights from excess. And I'll explain kind of 
why it is that I use those really quickly. The reason that this site is, in my opinion, superior to something like a U-notch site is that it has no circular radius in the bottom of its notch to draw your eye there to cause you to map the big circle here with the photoluminescent paint and the tritium vial. Instead, you have the planes to work with. Now, the argument being that the right angle of a site typically will draw your eye there and cause you to focus there abnormally long has been mitigated in this instance by beveling off the corners of the sights. They aren't a hard right angle to draw your, your sight. Also, in the if you draw your attention to the inside of this uh, notch here at the back, it's not a true right angle there at the base of the sight. It has been rounded off, but it is not a circle. While my brain is being squishy and I try to remember what that term is, I'm gonna go ahead and measure with that method I talked about earlier. And you can see uh, the term is chamfer. Uh, that site is actually a little bit tighter than the last one, but it's pretty close. So there's been a chamfer that has occurred on the inside corner there that keeps it from being a right angle that draws your, your line of sight. You want your line of sight to be drawn to the, the chasm that is the rear sight, but you don't want it to be drawn to the outside or to the bottom. And in my opinion, a U-notch sight draws your eye to the bottom because it ignores the uh, the basics of human eyesight. If I take a circle, for instance, and put it up on the screen here and put a dot in the center of it and call it the center, and it's not the center, you can tell that that's not the center. But if I do this, then you can see that it's, it's pretty close to the center. The other style of sights that I tend to use are these express sights. And these are modeled after an old style big game hunting site that was used for I mean, over a hundred years, <laughs> for crying out loud, for uh, dangerous game hunting in Africa. These are a suppressor he set, height site, a suppressor height set of sights. Excuse me. I will throw in a regular height set of sights for you guys to look at. But what we have is a triangle that allows you to very quickly find the center of that rear sight. I don't think anybody's going to argue with me where the center of that rear sight is. It has also had the sharp angles on the wings burned off. Typically, I gravitate towards their big dot sights. And the whole purpose of this is to do exactly what the U-notch sight claims to do but doesn't do very well because it confuses your eye. This makes it plain as day. This is a fast acquisition sight, again, validated over trying to keep people from getting eaten by lions and stomped into a little puddle by Cape Buffalo. Uh, now we've turned it into a defensive handgun sight. Don't understand why we, it is that we put the extra effort into manufacturing U-notch sights when there are better alternatives out there. Because just looking at the geometry of a lot of these U-notch sights, I can see the machine passes that are used to cut them. And it has to take more to manufacture a U-notch sight than it does a traditional notch and post site, and most certainly more effort than machining something like this. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you didn't, then also let me know about it in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you. I read everything that you write, and I look forward to the vigorous discussion in the comment section down below.